Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love's Data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new app and web property in Google Analytics. This is an update to my previous video covering app and web properties. Since app and web properties are still in beta or beta, features and reports can change without notice. So you might notice some differences in your own account. This new type of property allows you to combine data from your website and mobile app in a single set of reports. And even though it's called an app and web property, you still might want to use it even if you're only going to track your website. Why? Well, this new type of property comes with new reports and some automatic tracking features, which are called enhanced measurement. Let's get started. The new app and web property is the latest evolution of Google Analytics. It's designed to provide greater flexibility in the way we track the actions taking place on our website and in our app. Rather than being built around page views, we can now see that Google Analytics is built around a flexible event structure where we can send all different types of information to our reports. This added flexibility is welcome, but will likely cause some confusion if you're just getting started. Don't worry though, we'll walk through exactly how you can get up and running quickly to track the pages on your website and some of the other actions people are taking. Okay, so to take advantage of these new reports and features, you will need to create a new app and web property in Google Analytics. Let's take a look at the steps. To start, we need to navigate to Admin, and then select Create Property. We can then see options to create a property to track a website, an app, or an app and a website. To create a new app and web property, we need to select the Apps and Web option, even if we're only going to use the property to track a website. Then we need to click Continue. Now we need to name our property. I'm going to call this property Love's Data Demo, but you can name your property anything you like. Typically, this should be the name of your organization, website, or app. We can then select our industry category. Our reporting time zone. And the currency for our reports. Now let's click Create. We can now configure our first data stream for our new app and web property. You can add multiple data sources to your property. You can create data streams for iOS apps, Android apps, and websites. I'm going to select web for my data stream. Now I need to enter the URL of my website and I can name the data stream. We can see that enhanced measurement is enabled by default. This new feature will automatically track a number of common actions into Google Analytics. Let's select the configuration icon to take a look. We can see enhanced measurement will automatically track page views, scroll depth, outbound clicks, site search, embedded YouTube videos, and file downloads. I want to automatically track all of these actions, so I'm going to leave all of the options enabled. Now we can click Create Stream. Let's select our new data stream. This gives us everything we need to begin collecting data from our website into our new property. You'll notice changes if you've been using standard website properties in Google Analytics. We have the option of adding a new tracking tag to our website. We can see this under Add New on Page Tag. So if you don't currently use Google Analytics, you can use this option to start collecting data. However, if you're already using Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager, then you'll want to use one of the other options. If you have already implemented Google's Global Site Tag or gtag.js on your website, then you can connect your existing tag to the new property to begin collecting data without having to change anything on your website. Now I want to highlight, if you want to collect data from your existing Google Analytics tracking code, you will need to make sure that the global site tag is implemented directly on your website. If it isn't, then simply linking to your existing property doesn't pull any data into your new property. Finally, if you're using Google Tag Manager, then you can add a new tag inside your Google Tag Manager container. To do this, you'll need to copy the measurement ID and use this when you configure the new app and web configuration tag in Google Tag Manager. 
Let's do this now. Now that we've copied the measurement ID, let's head to Google Tag Manager. Since I'm already using Google Tag Manager on my website to collect data into my existing standard Google Analytics property, I'm going to add an additional tag to my container. We can now create a new tag. Let's name the tag Google Analytics App and Web. And select App and Web configuration as the tag type. Then we paste the measurement ID into the tag configuration. And now we need to select a trigger for the tag. Let's select all pages. This will fire the tag on all the pages of our website. Let's save the tag. This means we now have the new App and Web Configuration tag, and we have our existing standard Google Analytics tag, so we're sending data to our existing property and our new property. We can now click Submit to publish the changes to our website. Let's head to our website and reload the page. This will trigger the new tag and begin collecting data into our new property. To view the reports, we can now head back to Google Analytics. We can now start exploring the reports. On the left, we can select Real Time. This shows us the current users on our website. It's more interactive than the real-time reports in a standard property. And you can open the user snapshot to see how individual users are engaging with your website and app in real time. If you ever need to add additional data streams to your reports, you can head back to Admin and select Data Streams. You can then manage your existing data streams and create new ones. For example, if you also wanted to track your app, then you can add a new data stream. And enter the details for your app. This will then create a new Firebase project. Once you've added the Firebase SDK to your app, you'll begin to send data to your reports. Or if you wanted to track an additional website into your property, you could create another data stream for your additional website. So that's how you can create a new app and web property in Google Analytics. Remember you can use your property to track websites, apps, or both. And if you are tracking a website, then I recommend tracking your site into a standard property and an app and web property, so you can take advantage of both types of properties in Google Analytics. For more details about the reports you'll find in your new app and web property, head to my blog. You can find a link in the description below this video. Are you going to create a new app and web property? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please like it so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.